Hey guys, it's Zach from Motocrane, and in this video, we're gonna go through setup and tuning for INS advanced stabilization. Now, INS is really a three-part upgrade to Motocrane Ultra. It includes a new 1,000-watt brushless lift motor that we install here at Motocrane into your Ultra turret. It includes a new firmware upgrade for your Motocrane controller, which adds a dedicated tuning interface for INS. And then it also includes a nine axis attitude heading and reference system sensor that you mount to one of your middle booms. And between these three parts of the upgrade, lift axis stabilization is improved by about tenfold. And that's really important for our customers who do a lot of shooting off road, where it's really important to maintain arm angle despite changes in the terrain. So the first thing we're gonna do is get into uh, mounting the INS sensor onto the middle boom. And the first thing I'm gonna do is separate the sensor module from the back. And I'm just gonna remove these four fasteners. All of the information included in this video is also detailed in the INS operation manual, which we will include a link in the description of for this video so you can follow along. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm working on the correct side of the middle boom, which is gonna be the male side that has the clip, not the clip receiver, which is gonna get installed onto the fulcrum. So make sure you're on the correct side and then measure 45 millimeters, which is just under two inches from the inside of this weld. And that's gonna be the distance that we're gonna mount the INS sensor away. Then I'm gonna grab my backing plate here and I'm gonna loosely install these four fasteners and I don't wanna tighten them down yet all the way because I need to check to make sure that the sensor is level and not crooked or skewed to one side. So now using a bubble or a spirit level, I'm just gonna place this right on top of the sensor module itself and just make sure that I'm not rolled towards one side of the boom. I wanna make sure that it's level. So I was pretty close there. And now that I have it level, I'm gonna tighten down the rest of my fasteners. I'm gonna check one more time just to make sure. Looks like we're spot on. And now that I have my INS sensor mounted onto my middle boom, I'm able to proceed with the rest of the build and then we'll get into tuning. So now that we have the whole system built on our Tiguan here, we're gonna make sure that we're mechanically set up before we get into the trunk, turn on the PSU, and get into INS tuning. The first thing that we're gonna prepare is making sure that our passive isolator here is tuned all the way slow, which is to say that the Z-axis dampening is all the way stiff. And we're gonna do this with respect to how the INS operation manual describes the relationship between INS tuning and passive isolation. If our passive isolator is tuned too fast or too soft, it's gonna cause our system to be prone to oscillations because of this flex here at the end. Now, once our isolator is set as we need it to, we're gonna do a mechanical check on the ultra base. We're gonna check every fastener to make sure that everything is tight, that our speed rail clamps are torqued down because any kind of slop is gonna, again, cause our system to be prone to oscillations during tuning. So we've got the unit built, we've got our isolator prepped, we've done a full mechanical check on the base to make sure that nothing is loose. Now we're ready to turn on the PSU and get into tuning. So now that I have the unit powered on, I'm able to navigate to the INS tuning interface on the Motocrane controller. And I can find that under settings, advanced settings, and then INS stabilization configure. And this is that new tuning interface that gets added during the firmware upgrade. And on the left hand side of the screen, we can see the INS sensor status, and then also monitor real time performance of stabilization. Then on the right hand side, we have all of our tuning parameters. And in the INS operation manual, a chart is provided which gives you stable starting point values based on your payload. So I know this payload is 55 pounds and uh, I'm gonna input those stable starting point values now that are provided in that chart. So 
So now that I have my default or my starting point values input into my tuning, I can turn INS stabilization on. And what this screen is going to remind me of is that when I turn INS on, limits are going to be in absolute mode, meaning that it's going to control the range of motion based on the real angle of the arm and not relative to the vehicle. So there's a lot more information on that in the operation manual. Make sure you dig into it and make sure you understand it. We're going to confirm and now INS is on. So what I can do from here is start to increase the strength and the stiffness of my tuning to make sure that I'm getting the most out of it, but that I'm not getting oscillation. So I'm going to increase strength by one and stiffness by two and see how the system performs then. I'm going to continue to increase strength and stiffness until I start to see the end of the arm oscillating or the controls become not so smooth. So I'm going to take my strength from 6 to 7 and my stiffness from 12 to 14. And I'm getting a little bit of oscillation there, so I think I'm getting into that point of, of uh, where I'm kind of reaching the upper end of the tuning. I'm going to push it just to make sure that I get a steady oscillation so we can show you here on film. So I'm increasing my strength from 7 to 8, and then my stiffness from 14 to 16. So again, I'm going to increase strength by one point and stiffness by two points. So with my tuning set at a strength of 9 and a stiffness of 18, I hit a point where the oscillation is not really favorable. So I'm going to bring back my strength a few points and the same to stiffness. I'm going to land at a final value of 6 and 14. And this is going to be specific to your setup and is really payload dependent. So again, make sure that you experiment with this to make sure you're getting the most out of tuning without getting to a point of oscillation and unstable controls. If you guys have any other questions about INS or if it's appropriate for your scenario or your shooting application, make sure you get in touch. Thanks.